This video log is going to be about setting up a small portion of your valve train geometry, uh, specifically the issue of taking the tap at the tip of the rocker arm and how it aligns with the center line of the valve stem. And uh, I know there's tons of videos out on the internet about how to set up the geometry in general, but there's in my opinion, not a very complete uh, pile of information about uh, why you would take uh, the time to set up the valve train so that the tip of the rock arm runs across the end of the valve just off the edge. Um, in general, the idea is, is that uh, if you've got that uh, that push off the edge of the valve that you're going to use that off-centered action to turn the valve and uh, in general the high performance guys don't really give a crap about that and uh, of course uh, this being a mileage channel mild applications uh, not high rpm type stuff uh, stock valve springs stock-ish heads and valves and rocker arms and whatnot, uh, your tendency to think is, uh, well, we probably want to do what the stock guys do, and the stock guys are going to rely on that off-center. But uh, your high mileage, high MPG aspirations, they're kind of a performance. And uh, my recommendation is that you should probably try and align a tap at with the center line of the valve. And uh, that's going to be for longevity. And uh, essentially, you're going to get valve rotation, whether you want it or not, whether you've tied it in or not. And uh, I'm going to tell you why you're going to get it and why having it offset isn't going to do you any good. So, um, I mean, it doesn't do any harm to really, I think, put it off center. But... You know, I've been digging around and I cannot find the specification that tells me, oh, by the way, when you set up this rocker, take it, here's your center, put it there, measure one millimeter, and that's where you got to put it. So there's no specification that tells you how far off center you're supposed to do it. So, you know, when you, given how much attention to detail there is, there's a specification for everything. Pork this bolt to this thing. You know, Let's say the, the cam to the thrust bearing. There's a gap right there. How much is that gap? Well, there's a spec on that. There's a rod, the connecting rod to the crankshaft, and there's a clearance between those two pieces. All right, well, there's a spec for that. But there's no spec for how far off center I need to take that tap egg and pull it from the center line of the valve. There's no spec for that. And uh, I suspect that there's a reason for that, and that is it doesn't really do anything. And uh, you watch this video all the way through. I'm going to explain everything. I'm not doing a spreadsheet. No spreadsheet this time. But I am going to draw some pictures. I haven't drawn pictures in any of my videos yet. We're going to go downstairs and I'm going to draw some pictures. And explain to you why that tap at being off center doesn't do anything. You know, like I say, it's not going to hurt really. But it's not going to rotate your valve. And uh, don't sweat it. Down the middle. Slightly off center. It's going to work. It's going to work okay. Don't stick it off the edge. i got some pictures. I'll show you where somebody's got one off the edge. You go over to the SAM, you can find lots of people who have screwed things up. And they'll post photos of things they've messed up. This one should be fun. Watch it. See you at the end. All right, so I did mention that I was unable to find a standard, right, on how much of an offset to use. So I've got my Chilton's book here. Sorry, we open our Chilton's book to Engine and Engine Rebuilding. And we come down to Rocker Shafts. And if you read through all this Rocker Shaft stuff, they do not mention anything as far as a standard as to how much of an offset you're supposed to use. Okay? That's not the only place that they talk about the Rocker Shafts. They've also got some stuff back here Engine and Engine Rebuilding again. 
There's some uh, nice little pictures and whatnot. But again, you get into this area, and again, they don't tell you. There is no standard. I'm sure there's something in some book somewhere, but it does not exist in the Chilton book. And we're not done. We have to come over here to how to keep the Volkswagen alive. This is an ancient copy of it. Look, $9. I don't know if they sell them for that nowadays, but uh, hey, whatever. Anyway, where's my page? Let's see if I can go to my page. Here is my page. Install push rods, install rocker arms. Rocker arms goes from here over to down there, and you will find nothing in this book about how much of an offset. Doesn't even mention rotating of the valves. Nothing. So, I'm not saying this is a complete survey of all of the books, but my two books do not say anything about the offset and rotating of the valve. All right, let's do a little Samba stuff right here. So this, what, what we have here is, if I can get it in the center, let's read. I have read people saying that it should be offset so that the valve will slowly rotate. People, lots of people, common knowledge. The offset of the adjustment screw on the valve tip is exactly, exactly, is exactly what causes valve rotation. Okay? Do you understand? This is common knowledge. This is what people will tell you. Let's keep going. Did you know they are supposed to be slightly offset? They're not supposed to be centered on the valve. Okay? This is user after user after user. This is this particular user is a big name user. It's off to the side. I'm not going to display it. Don't want to offend that person. I have picked on them before. So let's move on. The foot is off-centered slightly to help with valve rotation. It's so many people, so incredibly many people. Let's keep going. All right, so this is a good one. Now keep in mind that uh, what I've been telling you is that you don't need to be off-centered. So, and uh, additionally, you know, I oftentimes disagree with what Berg did, but let's read a little bit about what Berg thought. There's plenty of valve rotation created by spring wrap with the keepers fitting tightly to the valve. Gene Berg was correct about that. I've never seen another engine that has the keeper faces touching and they do not have rotation issues or lack of. So anyway, Berg and I agree on something. Yes, you do not need to uh, be concerned about putting your valve tap at off center. Okay, let me see if I can explain my position here. All right, where do we start? All right, let's look at this diagram right here. I have a valve. Okay, it's going in and out. Push rod, driven by the cam, which is going to be down here. Uh, this is a rocker arm. This is going to be a rocker shaft. So if I push up on this, this guy swings through an arc. This is a, you know, and this is a pinpoint, so it's going to swing through an arc. Uh, you push it up, it swings down, you get to the back side of the cam lobe, it swings back. So if you look at this, this is the arc that it's going to swing through. Uh, let's say it starts here. All right, I push it out, and then I continue pushing and it goes down because I've done a good job of my alignment. I've taken my alignment, and at 50% lift, I've got it pretty well lined up with this guy right here. So I'm a little bit like this, I then go to this, I then go this direction as it swings through its arc. It's going to give us a curve that looks something like this. Alright, this curve, where I go from here to here to here, is represented by this line. And this is an 8 millimeter valve tip. This is a drawing of the valve tip. So, I take it, I offset it. This is about a millimeter. To scale, this is going to be about 1 millimeter, half, you know, 2 millimeters, 3 millimeters, 4 millimeters. And, uh, we push, it's open, and we let it fall back. So it goes up and down and up and down. I get two pushes in one direction, and I get two pushes in the other direction. Uh, we can look at this curve right here, and we can show that. I push up, 
I stop, I continue pushing, it goes negative. All right? I push up in one direction, then I push down as it continues through. Uh, now how do I know that there's no force? This is going to be representing, the, this represents the torque. I've got, a, I've got a force, I've got a perpendicular. So this is going to represent our torque that we're, that we're applying. Plus to minus, then I reverse it, plus to minus. What is my net torque? If I look at this diagram. So you go, okay, well I've got one circle, two circles, so I've got two torques. Uh, no. Actually what you've got is a plus torque and a minus torque, and then you reverse the torque with the exact same magnitude plus torque, and then I reverse this torque with this exact same magnitude of a negative torque. So our net torque is zero. There is no torque, net torque, being applied to rotate the valve. See, this, this is where I stand. You know, I don't approach the vehicle as though it is a belief system. I don't believe that doing this offset is going to make my valve rotate. I need my valve to rotate because of physics. The physics needs to determine whether or not something is happening. And the physics is telling me that that rotation is not going to be caused by the valve pushing up and down off center. I am, however, not done. Uh, let's do one other thing real quick here. Okay, so you're still like, no, no, it's still going to make it rotate. All right, let's, do, let's look at one more thing. All right, you see the dotted line. The dotted line represents where the keepers sit. Okay, so the keepers are around the outside. And if I'm pushing down right, right, right there, I'm pushing down on this line, my keepers are going to be pushing back. So there's friction going across here. But because I'm pushing against the keepers, the keepers are going to be pushing back and are going to be providing a friction in the exact opposite direction. Look at the lever arm here. This is a one millimeter lever arm. This lever arm from the keepers is three millimeters. It's got three times the lever arm, okay? But so you say, okay, well, it's all about friction then. Maybe there's less friction on the keepers and more friction at the tapette. But the tapette is designed to be a smooth and friction-free. If this was not friction-free, as that tapette went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, you would melt something right there. There is so much power being processed through this thing that if there was any significant friction at all, you would melt right at that point. So the friction from this tapette is going to be less than the friction from the keepers. So in addition to the keepers being more friction, from a, what do you call it, the coefficient of friction. It's going to be higher with the keepers than it is going to be with the tapette. They also have a greater leverage. There's no way that this is going to overcome that. So there's your two reasons. It doesn't rotate because there's no net torque being applied. And it also won't rotate because it can't overcome the friction that is being provided by the keepers. Now at this point, hopefully it's just like not giving me the finger completely. But I have a video on YouTube, and I'm going to link that video in the description. I recommend highly that you go look at that video. I'm going to pop it up here and point a couple of things out to you real quick. All right, there are some people out here in the Samba world who understand, so I'm going to read a little tiny bit. Okay, now hold the valve in place. Move the keepers up and down because you've got, them, you've got keepers that are loose. And side to side, you will feel movement in all directions. That movement will cause a hammer effect and that is what will beat out the valve lock grooves and can cause the valve to drop or break. There's no arguing that the valve will rotate within the keepers when set up like this. The problem is that the valve retaining grooves will become hammered out and you take a huge risk of having the valve break and drop. Also, as I said before, even with tight keepers, there is enough valve rotation through spring wrap to get the job done. All right, this is what Berg was saying. Spring wrap. Well, it's not just from spring wrap. It also comes from vibration. I'm going to show you a video. Watch the vibration in the video. One more thing. With loose fitting keepers, you will find that your valve faces tulip, having a dished out appearance, and your valve job goes bad a lot sooner than if the keepers were fit tightly. This is because the valve bounce that's happening due to the keeper allowing the valve to vibrate on the seat as the valve closes. Very good. He's not the only one. Got a guy from Australia. Look at that. Melbourne, Australia. You know, I tell you, the Sam is cool, man. You got people from everywhere. 
Rotation of the valve within the keeper is believed to increase wear and cause failure. And the increased bite on the stem, which is what I just told you. I got that thrill of 3 millimeter torque versus the 1 millimeter torque. The increased bite on the stem is believed to be stronger. No, it is stronger. You don't believe that it is stronger. You do the physics and it is stronger. If there's at least one shim under the spring, the valve usually rotates anyway. The valve is going to rotate. Watch the video. All right, so here's the video I want you guys to watch. Things to note. First of all, they've got a roller-tipped rocker. Okay? The roller tip's not going to provide a force that twists it this way or that way. It's just a roller tip. It's designed to be a, a better friction alternative to a, uh, a piece of steel scraping across the end. This is a much more modern thing. But watch this. Look at this right here. This entire assembly is spinning. Okay? That's the the retainer. This is the spring. The spring is spinning. If you look carefully, you can see that this is a dual spring setup. So there's an outer spring and an inner spring. So this is a, a heavy duty, high performance system. Look at these things right here. You can see the top. Look at that the little dot right there as it's spinning. Look at the oscillations. Look at this. Look at this stuff bouncing. Look at the coils bouncing up and down. Okay? Now imagine one millimeter right here at the top. With your tap, you tip. Okay? You're trying to turn it back and forth with the tip right there. While all of this. Imagine the power that it takes to drive all this oscillation stuff down in here. And all you've got is a little piddly little one millimeter doodad that's sitting there most of the time not doing anything and it's still rotating it's caused by this the spring the oscillations in the spring you know the spring compresses and it turns okay and all this vibration and stuff this is a double spring the two you know the double springs are designed to interfere with each other so that you get an interference fit and the interference fit between the inside and the outside spring damps all this vibration. So this is after all the vibration is being damped and it's still doing this. This is what's happening in your motor. This is why you don't need to do an off-center. But I encourage you to watch that video. Okay, these are tapettes. And I want you to see, see this line right there? Look at that line. This is because somebody took their tappet and they offset it from the center of the valve. So they ended up, uh, this, this ended up wearing and uh, yeah, they beat the crap out. There's another one right there. But uh, yeah, yeah. They went with an offset and they got some bad wear on the tappets. Usually you talk about the wear being down in the valve and whatnot, but this was bad wear on the tappets. Okay, so there you go. Um, I would hope that the physics was convincing. But if the physics didn't convince you, you watch that video and you see how much jumping and banging and slamming around is going on and you ask yourself, was that really being caused by that little teeny tiny tweak of a, of a twist? And it's a back and forth twist. It's not rotating it. It's back and forth. It's not there. And uh, yeah, I'm telling you, it's going to rotate. It's going to rotate because of the spring vibrating, not because of anything that you're doing with your tap at. So if it's going to rotate anyway, for the life of your motor, put it as close to center as you can get it. That's what the high-performance guys do. That's what you should be doing as a mileage guy or a stock guy. Get it as close to the middle as you can possibly put it. But other than that, there are tons of good alignment videos out there on the Internet. Knock yourself out go watch them. I'm not going to do one because it's already been done. The only thing that hasn't been done is what I just showed you. So hopefully that didn't piss any of you off, but uh, yeah. Learn. Educate yourself. It's a physical device. It's not a belief system. It, be it behaves according to physical law. All right? Yeah, hopefully that was fun. I enjoyed doing that one. Haven't done one in a while. More later.